Hi everyone. My name is Savannah and welcome to my channel. Um, I am the creator of So Livy Dyes Yarn, um, which is a small um, yarn dyeing business that I have. Um, I have yarn here for sale on my website. Um, my website is solivydyesyarn.com, which you can find linked down below in the description along with all of my social media and um, anything that I talk about in this video. Well, most, most everything I talk about in this video. My cat Orange has come to join me. Um, he likes to do this every time. If you're new, you don't know that. My cat Orange likes to join me for every video. He doesn't want to be on screen. He just wants to be near me. Um, if you, <clears throat> if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. So I'm really tired. Uh, today was a struggle to get out of bed. Um, quick life update. Um, I did start my new job last, last week, last Thursday. So I did Thursday, Friday, and then I did yesterday, Monday. Um, <clears throat> I was supposed to start last Tuesday, but, uh, there was a hiccup with getting fingerprints done. I think I talked about it in my last video. Um, it was a little disappointing. Uh, but everything got taken care of. I was able to start and it's hard. <laughs> I think it's only difficult um, because of the heat we've been having. So I am a lunch slash slash recess aide and afternoon crossing guard at my children's school. Um, really, my, all that entails is me. <clears throat> I haven't done inside lunchroom yet. I've only had to be outside. So what that means is we... Um, Recess is two hours long, so it's each grade, like, you know, each grade has their own recess time. So it's two hours to for kindergarten through fifth grade, two hours. I stand out there and just supervise, make sure the kids aren't doing anything they're not supposed to be doing, helping anybody who, who's, you know, who needs a Band-Aid. Um, letting kids in to use the restroom if they need to. That's pretty much it. <clears throat> the only rough part is that the weather has been so bad <laughs> these last few days. Um, you know, in the 90s, high 80s, low 90s, um, very hot. Um, but the smoke from the wildfires in California have been here, um, very bad. I guess Denver was the number one polluted city in the whole world on Saturday um, due to the smoke. Uh, it was, it's really bad. Like, we can't see the mountains at all. Um, normally, I could see the mountains clear as day from from my house. They're completely gone. <clears throat> my poor kids have been just coughing up a storm just because of all the smoke. We try to keep them inside, but um, I still have to go outside for recess. Uh, the conditions aren't bad enough, I guess. Um, so there's that, uh, dealing with that. We also helped my father-in-law move this weekend. So that was a lot of uh, hard work as well. Heavy lifting, because it was just me, my husband, and my father-in-law. Um, got everything done in two days. But heavy lifting, hot weather hot. Um, yeah, so I did get sunburnt last week. My face was super red, uh, but I did buy myself a giant brimmed hat and I've been like putting SPF 50 on me and it's not, you want to see, it's not been working very well. Can you see that? <laughs> Do you see how, I mean, it's not as dramatic as it is in person. <laughs> I'm really tan. I'm really tan. Um, I don't know. It's, it is what it is. I'm glad to have a job. Um, I would just like to do inside for a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm working this Thursday and Friday because the kids aren't in school those days. So 
I gotta double check today. Other than that, um, that's life, I guess. <clears throat> trying to think, yeah. Um, I was a little bit stressed out about this coming up weekend because we have a lot to do as well. And I'm just like, I want my my new routine to just get normal so that I can find time for things because I feel like I don't have enough time in my life for everything I want to do. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I'm just hoping my routine can get like more familiar. You know, I can get familiar with my new routine type thing and then be able to manage my time better, I guess. Um, so I was stressing about this upcoming weekend because we have a lot to do, but then I realized I might not have to work on Thursday and Friday. So I was like, oh, I don't have to stress that much. I will have time on those days. We'll see. Um, <clears throat> anyways, let's go ahead and get into the stuff I have to show. All my fiber arts. It's all knitting and spinning this week. Okay, guys? Okay. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead with my whips. Um, I guess this one's a new start, so we'll go ahead. Uh, it's August, so I had to start. Um, my August socks are the Rainbow Sock Chronicles, which is a... Aurora's getting into something upstairs. Dang her. Uh, Rainbow Sock Chronicles. It's a year-long knit-along by, by So Sweet Violet and Lay Family Yarn. Um, I'm, I link that down below in the description. You can find their, their Ravelry groups to these, this knit along. Um, <clears throat> anyways, you knit a pair of socks every month based on the color of the rainbow. August is lavender slash lilac. Um, so I know I don't, I don't think I had anything picked out last week to show you, but I did. I went through my stash and I picked this one. This is a deep stash dive. I think it's been in my stash for about two years now. Um, I got it in a swap. It was the fiber share swap that I did, like I said, two years ago, I believe. Um, what do I want to say about it? Um, there's no tag, no nothing. I can't exactly remember which partner I got this from. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, for not remembering which partner it came from, but um, it's fingering weight. That's what I know. I don't know if it's a 75, you know, 25 merino nylon. I don't know what it is, um, honestly, but the colors work. It's really pretty. Um, the colors aren't showing up as true on the screen. They're, they're showing up darker. A little bit darker but it's just it's really nice so I started it I'm really slow going on it I'm just not pushing myself I should just to get it out of the way but this is how it's knitting up I've hit where I'm going to put my heel in <clears throat> I didn't expect it to pool it's striping and pooling on this side and then just straight pooling on that side which is different um I didn't expect it to do this but I don't mind it. It can do what it wants to do. <laughs> so yeah, I've knit um, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 rounds. And then I put in, and I'm counting this as 10 because this is, well, this was like, I think 11, 11 rounds, but 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 50. And then put in my heel marker. Um, I have learned that putting Markers on either end um, is helpful for putting in the afterthought heel just to know where the, like if for some reason my sock gets like turned like this, I know where the ends of my, or the sides of my sock is, especially when I get to the toe, that'll be like that. And then my heel cannot be off center by a little bit. I've run into that issue once before where I, my sock got off just a little bit and I was unsure where my heel was supposed to go. So yep, that's August. Um, it's in my baby Yoda bag. This one's by um, Otterly Adorable Knits. So there's that. And then my other whip that I've worked on is my um, my Hongdae shawl. I'm still cracking along on that, guys. 
Hung Day by Ashley Wimp. I'm using um, So Livy Dyes Yarn that I've dyed. Um, it is the Laura Olympus color of the month for January and February. So Persephone and Hades. If you read Laura Olympus, yes. These, so I had to fast pass and I won't give any spoilers, but the actual episode that was released for free this past Saturday was a really big, oh my gosh moment. Like, holy crap, what is about to happen kind of thing. And I couldn't stand it, so I had to fast pass. And it all around just... <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers, but like, holy buckets. Holy buckets. I think I know who I'm going to use for... Oh my gosh, what is it? What's next? September. September's color of the month. I believe I know who I want to use as my inspiration for the yarn. Anyways, <laughs> back to Hung Day. I'm in the middle of a row because, you know, that's how I do. <clears throat> this is what it looks like. It's, it's getting really big, which I love big shawls. Um, I'm still working on that border. It's very slow going because each round or row takes forever. So it looks like that. This is kind of what I'm doing. Um, oops. So yeah, this is, I believe this is where I was the last time I showed you. I did not get very far. Um, but again, these rounds take forever and I have started work, so... I don't get as much time. Plus, spinning has kind of been taking over, which I'll show you in a little bit. But spinning, I have been really, really enjoying spinning. And um, I think I'm starting to get a few ideas on what to knit with some of my spinning. So it's just actually getting the stash up with my spun yarn um, before I do any of that. But yeah, I, go, I went ahead. Oh, that I put that in the wrong way. I just put that there so that I can show you. Um, hopefully not too much longer, but I'm sure it'll take another couple of weeks to have this finished. <clears throat> this one's in my Colorado bag by Modular Modular. Very nice. She's the one who also makes... These super awesome Notion pouches. It comes with all those little goodies inside. If you want to. I think there's the option just to buy the bag itself. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, last whip. <clears throat> oh my gosh, excuse me. Uh, last whip. I actually pulled this out and got a little bit more done on it. I don't know when, but I did. It is the um, Ice Cream Social by Lisa K. Ross or um, Paper Daisy Creations. I believe that's where you can get this. I don't think it's on Ravelry. I could be wrong. Um, Ice Cream Social. This was, this is, was a knit along that started on July 4th. July 4th? Um, with my local yarn store. Uh, let me show you a better picture. There's a nice one right here. So that'll be what it looks like. And I am on, still on the first section, I guess. Yeah, section one, well, yes, section one, lace. I'm on color four. One, two, three, four, yep. So this is where I'm at. I just picked up and started the fourth color. I finished the green one. And so I think I was here or I was a little bit higher. Um, this is my middle stitch marker. So you need a marker it's on that on that center stitch. Um, and you're constantly moving that up. Uh, so I did want something to mark where I was last time, which I'm using my little pink crystal from nitpicks and then this 
is a superstar, a Mario superstar um, that was gifted to me. So I'm not sure who made that, but I was gifted that awesome little stitch marker. So now I got to move this. I'll forget if I don't. So we'll put it here. <clears throat> and then I'll just move my, I'll move my uh, star up when I get some more rows. But yeah, the uh, lace work is a little bit time consuming for me. It is not um, the easiest thing. It's not a simple lace. Definitely more advanced. Um, but yeah. And obviously, since it is getting bigger and bigger, it does take a little bit longer for each for each row. So yeah, the colored yarn is a um, mini set from Yarn Bee. And then the white is just a bear yarn um, that I have. Bear yarn. So yep. And this is in my clear nitpicks bag. Super cool bag. I actually really like it. So those are my three knitting whips. I haven't done anything else. Oh, hi, Katie. I haven't done anything else. I've been, oh, I grabbed, I forgot to grab my, my haul the okay. other day. So since, since I've been only working on those things, I haven't really worked on anything else, but I have been, I have been like itching for a new cast on. Um, it's just trying to choose what to cast on. Like I want to cast on all the things. I want to cast on a new sweater. I want to cast on another shawl. I just signed up for a test knit. Um, I don't know if I got it yet, so there's no pressure there, but I did sign up for a test knit, which is a, another shawl. Uh, there's just so many things that I want to knit that I want to have. Um, but the timing is just not, it's not there. Um, so I'll show you what I went ahead and I dyed yarn and I kind of did like a cast on swatch. Um, so I'll show you what it is and I'll talk a little bit more about it, I guess, <laughs> obviously. So this shawl right here is called the Ramble Shawl by Andrea Mowry. Um, if you watch her, she's got a little podcast on YouTube now. It's called I'll Knit If I Want To. I think. I knit what I want. I forget. It's mostly just her doing a Q&A, you know, answering questions um, weekly. Um, you know, she's she's awesome. I really, really like her. I like her designs. Um, I really like her videos because she gives a lot of good information um anyways so in the background she has a dress form and that dress form is always wearing this shawl always and i love how it looks like big knit stitches it's brioche this is brioche but it looks like this big knit stitch i know it's um on here it's called herringbone uh brioche herringbone but it just looks like big knits right i love this so i finally bought the pattern um and I want to knit it. <laughs> so I dyed some yarn for it. I initially dyed this color. Gosh, my lighting is off today. It's really not, not working. I don't understand why. So I dyed this. Ooh, excuse me. And I figured I would use it with, with a, you know, a bare yarn as a contrast. Um, and I thought that would look really nice. Well, I dyed, what did I do? I dyed something the other day and I needed to soak up the rest of the dye. So I took a skein of yarn that I had in my stash already that was just like a really pale gray and I threw it in the pan because the pan had just more gray in it. And so I soaked it up and it got, you know, it's only just a slightly darker gray color now. I put it right next to this and it looked lovely. And I was like, ooh, should I dye up some gray to go with this? So I did. Here's the gray. 
The only problem is, is this ended up a little bit darker than um, I was going for. Um, I should have started with less dye <laughs> and worked my way up. So here's the colors. And as you can see, the gray is very similar. There's not much of a contrast there, which is unfortunate. Um, I did cake up the other two because this is DK. Um, the, the patterns knit in DK. I did go through some of the Ravelry projects, the projects on Ravelry that other people have done. Some people have done this in fingering weight, um, which I could have done, but I wanted to do it in DK. I just wanted something a little different than my norm. Here we go. I, I started it um, as a swatch. And as you can see, it's it's definitely hard. To I mean, you can see the stripes, but not, not as much as I'd want to. So that doesn't work. Um, and that's okay. Um, there is the matter of picking which one as the, the dark color for the shawl. Do I do it in blue original, like I originally planned? Do I do it in the gray to be just like this one? I mean, I have those options. So I'm not sure yet. I'm going to wait. Also, with that test knit that I signed up for, I believe that is also in DK. Um, you just need three, three colors. So I would say I have one of these colors, and then I would just have to dye up two other colors to go with either one of these. And honestly, this one could be really nice if I dyed up like a golden yellow. And I don't know what other color to do like a creamy color maybe. Um, this one could work too. I just don't know what colors I would put with this. So honestly, if I do get that test knit, and it's by Tiff Nealon, the test knit's by Tiff Nealon. If I do get it, I think I might use this in that. And so this one would become the Ramble Shawl. We'll see, I think I have to, we'll find out this today if I get, I'll find out today if I get the the test net because it's due at the beginning of September. So, so there's that. Um, next, I don't have a physical copy of this, but I did purchase, oh my gosh, I did purchase the Pom Pom Embody book. I don't think it's a magazine. It's the Embody one. Um, I'll insert a photo so you can see. Um, who was talking about it? Oh my gosh. I forgot who was talking about it, but somebody I was watching on YouTube was talking about this Embody book. Um, and so I went and I didn't realize it had sewing patterns in it. I think that's what it was. I didn't realize they had sewing patterns. So I was just like, oh. And so I went and looked through what they had. And I was like, wow, I really like the knitting patterns and the sewing patterns in this. So I think it's worth it. Um, as much as I would have liked the physical copy of it, which I might, if my if my local yarn store does carry it again um, physically, I think I might buy it. But I do own it um, digitally. Um, and so, yeah. And then, of course, Andrea Mowry, in her latest video, her last video, um, she was wearing the dress from that book that she made and it looked lovely and she was wearing her satellite shawl with it which I also own that pattern and so I'm just like I need to make all the things anyway so I went to Joanne's last week um went to Joanne's last week and I went to look at um some linen to possibly make um one of the pieces in the in the book because there's there's a top and then there is a dress that you can make. And so the top has three options, sleeveless, um, with shorts or with sleeves, uh, cropped or tunic length. So those are the options for the shirt. And then there's a dress option, um, which I believe, you know, it's sleeveless or with sleeves. Um, one has pockets and a tie and then the other one doesn't, um, either way. So those are the options. So I decided to go look for some, some linen or some, some kind of material. Sorry. So I, I went and looked to see what I could find 
um, just what they had available. So I went, like I said, to Joann's. I went to Hobby Lobby first, I'll be honest. I did go in, but I didn't see anything I liked, so I didn't get anything. Um, then I went to Joann's real quick, and um, I found this stuff. Uh, you know, I wish they came with tags so I could tell you what exactly it is. Um, but I don't really have anything. Like, maybe I should have taken a picture of the tag on the bolt. Um, but I got this linen. Um, it's a, it's a deep, uh, it's a deep purple burgundy color. Um, it's really pretty. Um, I got, they only had, I was like, what, two yards? Yeah, this is just over two yards, like barely over two yards. It was the end of the bolt, so I just grabbed it. Um, according to the pattern, um, I could make the the top, the shirt with this. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll be able to do the tunic length one and not just the crop. Um, so yeah, I got this to do that. Um, I do want to make the dress. Um, I just don't know what color um, linen I would make it in. And then just got some interfacing that was called for as well. So I got that. And then as I was walking out of the store, you know, they have these like little things in the middle of the aisle that usually hold yarn in my store. Like it's always full of yarn. It was very tempting. Well, I was walking past and they had some line brand feels like alpaca. And I was like, ooh. And so I gave it a squeeze. And I'm like, wow, this is really nice. And this is 87% acrylic, 7% polyester, and 6% nylon. It's really soft. And it's really nice. Um, it's called silver, right? This is the colorway? Yep, silver. That's some really nice colors, to be honest. Um, so I grabbed, there was three left. So I grabbed them. They're, um, it says a uh, size three, which I believe is like equivalent to a DK. This could be almost equivalent to a fingering though. Um, but I was thinking one of the knitting patterns from that book, like the way that, uh, Jacqueline has her things paired in the book are beautiful. So I was thinking either the cardigan, if this is enough or this sweater with some positive ease, layer this over the tunic oh that would be amazing so yeah i think i'll do the sleeveless tunic if i have enough and then knit one of the projects from the book with this so and then layer it together oh it would be amazing just finding the time to actually attempt this that's why i'm like i need a routine so that i can figure out when my time is most where my most productive time would be um yeah anyways so that's 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 all that but also the idea of casting on this sweater while I have my whole wish list of I can't point yeah there <laughs> sorry guys that whole list right there of sweaters that I want to knit there's all that that I need to I need to I need more hours of every day in my life. So there's that. I'll get it figured out eventually, right? Right. Um, okay, spinning. Let's go ahead and talk about spinning real quick. Um, I finished spinning up the... What is this? This is the... This is from Paradise Fibers. It is, I believe, just 100% merino wool roving um and it's called um the colorway is called once upon a time i believe it was from one of their past subscription boxes they have a subscription fiber subscription and they did a whole like once upon a time theme and i think this is one of the colors that came from it because i do have another color um as well from like based off disney movies um it's the little mermaid one um, so anyways, I got this all spun up and plied and I did wash it yesterday. So it's mostly dry. I don't feel any wetness. So what needs to be done? I need to put 
put this on my Swift, add the other one to this one, and then just skein it up and put it in my stash. I do need to, this one, see, this one's still a little damp. I need to figure out what weight this is. There is some chunkier spots. This was a an oops, oops area. Um, but most of it, and then there are some super thin areas, but most of it's pretty consistent. Um, so I need to see, it's probably close to a DK worsted. Probably, maybe. Um, this is where I had to attach two, two bobbins. Um, my bobbins are really small since I have the Nano, the electric eel wheel Nano. My bobbins are really small. Um, so I can only fit so much. Uh, I did the, I did a little bit of like, I guess you could say research. I just looked on the website. I wanted to see how much my bobbins hold. The website lists that the bobbins hold about two ounces, which is not a lot to be honest. Um, so I looked at the next one, the electric eel wheel, um, 6.0. Um, and that says the bobbins can hold up to eight ounces. That's, that's a lot of fiber. Um, so I really think I want to upgrade to a six so that I can, I don't have to break up my my fiber so often. So each, each one of these is actually two bobbins worth, and this is two bobbins, and then I have to put it all together. So I'll have a couple of these fancy little knots in there. I mean, I can always cut them out and not have them when I do knit with this. But yeah, look at that. Can't wait to get it all twisted up. See, here's another like big oopsie area. That'll probably get cut out when I actually knit with it. So that one's all done. And then the last two days I decided to spin up some more of my fiber, which is, it's the, um, this fiber is called, it's from, who's it from? Who's it from? Some Wonderful Studio on Etsy. Um, on Instagram, I think it's something.wonderful.studio. I'll have it all linked down below. Um, I purchased some fiber from her. Um, this colorway is called Picnic Weather, and it's 100% Falkland wool. Um, and I spun it up super fast. Two days. I think it took me two days to spin up all this fiber. So it was a pack of six roll eggs. Um, it was really, really nice. Um... It's, it's a little bit more rustic than, than Merino, but I'm not mad at it. So here's, here's what I spun up. So here's my bobbins. You can see how small they are. Um, about the size of my palm. Um, so each bobbin has two roll eggs on it. So, um, from the main picture I'll show right here, two yellows, two greens, two blues, um, so honestly, initially I was hoping that I could get three roll eggs on this one and three on this one. So I'd do two yellow and then the green and then a green and two blues. And then I could um, apply them together to make kind of like a barber pole effect-ish. Um, that's what I was really hoping for. But as you can see, two roll eggs filled up a bobbin. And so that's what I did. Um... And then I was kind of stuck. I'm like, how the heck am I going to apply these together to get the same effect that I was initially like thinking I could get? Um, anyways, so I posted on Instagram last night and I was like, how the heck am I going to apply these? And the actual, um, the lady I purchased these from, she's like, how about you apply them with a natural or a light gray, um, fiber, um, and then put them in a project striped wise, like you stripe them. Um, that was a good idea, honestly. So last night I ordered some black um, fiber. So hopefully I'll get that soon. And I'll I'll spin that up and then I'll apply it with these. So it'll be black barber pulled throughout these three colors. Um, so yeah. And this is to be different because the two yellows, like I said, one's lighter, one's darker. 
the green um the green underneath this one is like a yellow green and then this one's a blue green and then under here is a light a super light blue and then the darker blue so it's picnic weather um i should have the blue here the sun sky grass um but anyways and I also did get this. This is a haul piece that I got. I ordered this. Um, what is this? This is a Lazy Kate. This is a Lazy Kate. It's a vertical Lazy Kate. I like this style better than the horizontal ones that I've seen everywhere that sit like this. And then you pull your fiber off this way. I like this option better. Um, so I found this. Um, this is an Ashford Lazy Kate. Um, so I did some research, most of them, um, about 30 ish dollars, uh, not too bad. Um, I found this one on Etsy from the spinnery store, um, and they had a $5 coupon and super fast shipping. Like she sent it out. Like we ran into an issue. Like I was Googling these cause I didn't know what to call it. I Googled it, it brought me to the Etsy store, and then I purchased that way. Um, I did end up getting an email from the seller asking if we could possibly, if she could possibly um, cancel my order and I buy it directly from her store because when you find something, if you Google something and you click on the link that takes you to Etsy, Etsy overcharges by a ton for the seller, not the buyer. Um, she explained it all like there's all this percentage that upage kind of thing so she would have gotten less money which i think is kind of ridiculous for etsy to do that that's why i don't sell on etsy i don't want to deal with with their crap <laughs> so i i was totally fine with that i'm like cool, okay cool go ahead and and cancel my order i'll go on your website well her website she didn't have this she i guess when she was trying to populate her things over from Etsy to her store. It didn't work. So there was a little hiccup. Um, so there was a day, a day in between this, but once I was able to order it, she shipped it out immediately. And I had it in days from Pennsylvania, I think. Anyways, long story short, that wasn't needed. I got a lazy Kate and I love it. And it's Ashford. So yeah, now I gotta figure out how to pull these off, um, these bobbins to store until I get the black fiber, cause I only have six bobbins total. Um, I need some empty to be able to ply. Um, I'm going to need these to actually ply the black fiber onto. So yeah, that's that. I need to figure out how to where, how to store these. So that's my spinning. You can see my ends are a little extra fluffy, but I don't mind. <laughs> so that's that. Um, I need to let you guys go because I'm going to have to get ready for, well, I want some time to do something before I have to go to work. Um, So yeah, that's that's it, guys. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. We'll see what I have next week. Oh, excuse me. Who knows what I'll have started this week. We'll see. Um, thank you for stopping by. Bye.